Hello and welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. This is part seven of a video series how to build a web page using Tailwind CSS and Alpine JS. In the last video, we made the navigation and the drop down menu responsive for mobile. In this video, we finish coding the page. The only thing left is to also make the sidebar responsive. Let's jump straight in. What I want the sidebar to do on mobile is to move on top of the content, as we see here. And by clicking on the button, the sidebar should slide down and also push the content down. To position the sidebar on top of the content is easily achievable because we used the grid layout. In a grid layout, you can change the position of each element by giving them different order numbers. Let me show you how this is done. Let's jump into our code and we go to the sidebar. There we go. And we add here the class order one, meaning on mobile, I would like the sidebar to have the order position number one and on desktop order two. And the main should be exactly the opposite on mobile number two and on desktop number one. Okay, let's check this one out. We refresh here. There you go. The position of the sidebar is now number one and the content number two. And on desktop, the sidebar is number two and content number one. So now I would like the sidebar to be positioned on top of the content. So let's span the sidebar over the full width. So let's go to the sidebar here. At the moment on mobile, it will span over one column. And on mobile, we say call span full. We can copy this class because it's the same on the main as well. Span over the full width on mobile and on desktop span over two. There we go. Now let's adjust the margins. On the main we have MX of 5% and on desktop we keep the 10% and the sidebar we add the 5% on each side and on desktop we have margin right of 20%. There we go. Next, let's add the button. Let's add the button above the main. Here's the markup with a text in a span element and this is the arrow image. So let's add a class here. I would like it on desktop to be hidden. So MD colon hidden. And let's add a few classes to the A tag here. Class the flex items center cursor pointer select none font bold hover state of background gray. 200 with rounded corners and padding all around of three. Refresh the page. Okay, the button is here. At the moment, it's filling out the full first column here. We would like to position it in the middle and also adjust the arrow icon. So let's go to our 
element here and add call span full and also apply a margin left and right of auto so it's positioned in the middle and a margin bottom of six let's also add some classes to the image so have it a width of four and a margin left of 1.5 refresh the page nice now the button is in the middle and the arrow icon is resized next let's add the click functionality let's go to the content element and initialize alpine.js with x hyphen data and then we define a variable in curly brackets let's call our variable mobile sidebar open and and assign it a value of false so when you first come to the page the mobile sidebar is not open Let's go to the sidebar and add here x hyphen show equals mobile sidebar open. So if mobile sidebar open is true, the sidebar will show. We also add the x hyphen cloak so we prevent the blip from happening. And also we add a class. So on desktop, we force it to be shown. So exclamation mark for important block. Now let's add the click event. Let's go to our button here and add, add click equals mobile sidebar open equals the opposite of mobile sidebar open so there's a toggle here if I click on it it becomes true and if I click again it becomes false so let's check it out there we go if I click on it it appears and if I click again it disappears nice so now let's make the arrow rotate as well Let's go to our arrow here and add x hyphen bind. We bind a class to it. Colon class equals mobile sidebar open question mark. So is the mobile sidebar open? Then apply the class rotate 180 degrees and also a duration of 300 and otherwise if it's not true apply no class so empty string check it out there we go so now we can write this a little bit shorter a bit less verbose so you can get rid of this one here last part and instead of the question mark, you write two ends. So this is the same. So let's check it out. Should still work, yes. So now let's add the sliding down functionality. Let's go to our sidebar. Let's add transition elements. So x hyphen transition, colon enter, duration of 300, ease out style. Uh, we start with opacity of zero and a minus top margin of 96. And at the end of the transition, we have our opacity of 100 and the margin top is zero. So it's in place. Check it out. There we go. 
nice sliding down. At the moment, the sidebar slides down on top of the hero and the button. Let's change that. We can change that with the set index. Let's apply a set index to the hero. Set index of 10 and position relative. Let's copy those classes and apply it to our button as well. There we go. Now the sidebar should slide below hero and button. Refresh. Yes. Nice. And the content is pushed down. Let's check on desktop. Everything works. Yeah, great. So that's it. Our code is finished. We made the whole site responsive. Nice. So until now, we utilize the whole Tailwind CSS library though. In the next step, we collect only the classes we actually use in this project and minimize the style sheet for production. See you there.